Erica and Sharon are sisters who began their grief journey in 2006 when Erica's 10-year-old son Austin drowned. Together, they participated in a grief education program were so moved by this experience, they studied and became specialists so they could help the brokenhearted find recovery. In 2015, tragedy struck their family once again when Erica's oldest son Donovan was killed in a motorcycle accident. Erica and Sharon are committed to sharing their experiences of love, loss, and healing through this podcast. Now your grief specialists, Sharon and Erica. Hey friends, welcome back. You are listening to Healing Starts with the Heart, the show that is all about grief and your broken heart. We are so honored that you're here today. My name is Sharon, and this is my little sister, Erica. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for another amazing episode of our podcast. I am so excited every time we record these because I just, I, I really feel, Sharon, that we are getting better and better. We're starting to sound professional. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love the uh, response that we're getting. Like, we are getting people that are reaching out to us. We even got an email today where a woman is absolutely thanking us for the work that we're doing because she's been able to go to the podcast and get resources as she's on her grief journey. Right. Isn't that cool? That is just so amazing. So my friends, if you're listening to the show, there's a probability that your heart could be broken. Now, we talk about this all the time. It could be from death, but we want you to know that there are 40 or more known losses that a griever can experience. And many times we work with grievers that aren't just grieving death. Divorce, breakup of a romantic relationship. As Erica likes to say, uh, the death of their fur baby and their love of their life. So we are here for you no matter what your loss is. And we want to thank you for coming to our show today. The show today is kind of very personal to you and I. We've titled yeah. the show The Five Stages of Grief. But actually, I want to title the show There Are No Five Stages of Grief. Yeah, I think that's a better title. There are no stages, five stages of grief. So I actually did a TEDx in uh, 2018 where I actually stood on the TEDx stage and I debunk for ourselves the stages of grief. And I'm going to go over some of that real quick. The stages were created by Dr. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. She's a psychiatrist. And she wrote a book on death and dying in 1969. And in early 1970s, the stages um, that book had gotten out into the world and to all the psychiatrists, and they started to use this book in their practices in the, around the early 1970s. How the stages actually came about is Dr. Kubler-Ross had interviewed over well over 200 dying patients, patients that were actually dying that had been given a terminal diagnosis. And she had interns that were working with her, and she was teaching them. And what she would do is she would walk into these patients' rooms that were dying, and she would have conversations with them just to see how they were doing. How were they doing with the diagnosis? And one of the things that she realized is that many of them were dying to talk. They wanted to talk through where they were at. And then she would leave the room after she interviewed these patients, and she would turn to her, her interns and ask them what they had experienced about this conversation. But to move the process on a little bit further and faster, she created, which is what we understand, a list of 13 stages. And she created these stages so that the interns could quickly know what part of the process, the dying process, the patient was in. And somewhere along the way, these 13 stages got dropped to five stages. And that's what the psychiatrists started teaching in their practices. So these stages are denial, they are anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. When she would turn to her interns and look at these interns and ask them, where do you think the patient was? This was so that she could quickly move them on and also to help her with her thesis that she was writing at the time. Unfortunately, someone in the 
psychiatry world took the book on death and dying and they associated it with grief. <coughs> Excuse me. And so what we have a lot of times is that people will actually talk about the stages of grief that were really meant for dyers, for people that were dying. When our first loss occurred, Erica, I had learned the stages of grief in um, medical assisting school. You had learned the stages of grief in, uh, in college. You and I often talked about it. And so I quickly went and Googled the stages of grief so that I could find out what stage. Here's the funny part. This was, I wanted to find out what stage you were in because I only assumed that you were going to grieve, that Lewis was going to grieve, and so I wanted to know what stage you were in, so I quickly Googled them to remind me about it. And so let's talk about a little bit about what our, our phone conversations were like. They were like, I would call you up, and I always said the same thing. How are you today? Right. And after we would share our story of what, how the news was broken to both of us and then how you and I got to be together on that day um, after Austin passed and when you came to tell me that they that he had drowned we would go quickly to the stages and we would get some type of dialogue about well, what stage are you in today or I would you would you would bring it up and sometimes I would bring it up and this is why I think this show is so important I felt a lot of times like I couldn't connect to any of the stages because I didn't understand bargaining. What was that? How was I going to do that? What was I bargaining for? And I really wasn't ever angry. I, I was just mostly sad, devastated, uh, broken. I mean, I, that, that's how I felt. I didn't feel any of those, you know, other things. So I, I was trying to force myself into this box of these stages where I didn't fit. It was hard. I, in, in addition to already grieving, I felt like I wasn't doing it right. So then there was this other level of, I don't think I'm doing this right. How am I going to get better if I can't do it properly? Because I kept thinking this was the only way to do it, these five stages. And so that's why I think it's such a disservice that this information is put out there for grievers because when you do Google grief, the first thing that comes up yeah. are five stages. Yeah, exactly. So I want to also point out this, that Dr. Elizabeth Kugler-Ross has a subtitle right on the front of her book. And that subtitle is, What the Dying Must Teach Doctors, Nurses, Clergy, and Their Families. This book was definitely written for people that were dying. And so we have to remember that, and I agree with you, I remember when you and I were having these conversations, we were so hard trying to make these things fit onto you that they almost sounded crazy at times, right? So I remember this conversation. Hey, Erica, how are you doing today? And you said, well, I think, t I think today I'm in anger because you, we were always trying to fit a stage. And I was like, anger? Who are you mad at? Are you mad at Austin? And you said, no. I said, are you mad at Lewis, your husband? You're like, no. Well, are you mad at the people that were on the trip? You said, no, I would never be mad at them. I said, then who are you mad at? And then you said, uh, well, maybe I just can't believe that he's gone. Maybe I'm mad that he's gone. Like, we couldn't fit the anger to anything. And so we just kept going down the list. And when you finally came up with, well, maybe I'm just mad that he's gone, I believe I said, oh, okay, and then we accepted that. And then one of the stages is also depression. Would you say you were less than happy when Austin died? Absolutely, but I wouldn't say I was depressed. I was sad. Yeah. I was heartbroken. Yeah. I was yeah. devastated. I, I was all of those things, but to say I was depressed, I mean, I don't even think that that can really convey, can de you know, of course, you're just, you're broken, you're lost, you're, you're, you're in shock, you're numb, you're, you're all of these other things over these five stages. 
So I remember that you and I stuck with, we ended up sticking with anger and denial and depression. We stuck with those a lot. But we could never touch acceptance. How do you touch acceptance? Right. What, what is that conversation like? Uh, hey, Erica, how are you today? Have you accepted your son has died? I think I would have bit your head off. Right. <laughs> right. I think I would. I would have had such an adverse reaction to you wanting me to accept it. Why? Why is this something I need to accept? Why is this my life? Why did this happen to me? You know what I mean? It's like yeah. that opens the door to all these other things that at the time of a fresh loss, I couldn't even imagine. And, I, and unfortunately, what you and I know from working with so many people is that that's what their family members say. Well, you just need to accept this and move on. It's yeah. time for you to start getting your life back together because that's the information that they've been given. And it's, it's more harmful than it is helpful. And it's like they want the acceptance so that their life can go back to normal. Or right. a lot of what we talk about, hey, our new normal is just crappy. We need to just accept that and move on. Right, right. So, and I, we've shared the story in the beginning of how you tricked me to get to grief recovery. But one of the reasons why I stayed and one of the things that was so significant to my healing was the first thing Susan said was the stages of grief are not for grievers. And she immediately grabbed my attention because I had been struggling so much. I tell this story all the time. If anyone had been in that room when she said there are no five stages to grief recovery, you and I sighed. We like looked at each other. We were tearful, crying, and happy all at the same time. Like to have someone finally say that, but I think what it is, Erica, with the stages, what people want from the stages is they want a neat, clean box. They want right. grief to be, go to step one, denial. Once you're done with denial, go to step two, anger. Then you stay in anger for three weeks. Then you go to bargaining. Uh, like you said, I don't know who you're bargaining with. So then you stay there, bargaining is four weeks. Then you go to depression. You will be in depression for six more months. Then you come to acceptance and your grief is over. When you jump into that grief box, these five things will happen, and then you're all done. That's the biggest right. lie yeah. ever told. Only, biggest, biggest lie, biggest uh, disservice to grievers, and the biggest bit of misinformation that is out there when it applies to grief. Grief is unique and individual. Everyone is going to go through their process differently. There is no cookie-cutter remedy to grief. So I heard a woman tell on the, say on the news the other day, she was being interviewed and her daughter had, was in one of the uh, shoot, recent shootings that we had and now she goes around the country and she speaks. It was a beautiful, beautiful interview. But she said, I went through all the stages of grief and then I, uh, it was rinse and repeat. I started them all over again. At any moment, you could be in anger. Somebody could be really mad. At any moment, right. you could be in denial that it really happened. I mean, you yeah. could do, definitely be in disbelief. At any moment, I think sadness could be associated with depression. I'm not diagnosing here, but you could feel depressed, right? So at any moment, you could feel these. So basically, a lot of times what people are thinking is that you go through the stages and then you go through the stages again. Like you just keep going through them until time, enough time has passed and then you don't have the pain anymore. I don't, it's weird. Well, and then one of the things that I share is on any given day, you're going to go through the full range of emotions, mad, sad, glad, you know, all that fearful. You're going to go through that every five, you can go through it every five minutes. Yeah. Because grief is so, it's so overwhelming, and it, its process is what it is. You know, it just, for that person for that individual person. So you can go through the full range of emotions on any given day and then start over that next hour, you know? So there's no, there's no formula, there's no format, there's no, uh, there's no, there are no stages. It is what it is. And the way to uh, really rein that in is to find help and support. Hopefully they find us so that we can really educate them on how it's okay for them to go through their process the way that they need to go through it. Exactly. They need to go through their process the way they need to go through it, and it takes as long as it's going to take, and that's the other thing they need to understand. 
Here's the other thing. Grief is not a straight line. It's not one week here, two weeks here, three weeks here. It's not a straight line. You are up and down every single day. One day you could eat, even be laughing and telling jokes, which can make people feel really bad. And the next day you could be in bed like you just cannot get out. So here's what happened, my friends. About seven or eight months after Austin died, I called Erica one day and I said, hey, how are you today? It was always the lead-in question. And she said, today I think I'm in denial. And when you said that, I, it just threw me for a loop because I was like, oh my gosh, she doesn't know her son died? It was really weird. And so I lowered my voice and I leaned into the phone and I said, Erica, you know he died, right? You remember we had a funeral, almost like you were crazy. And you were like, yeah, Sharon, I know he died. And that's when I realized these stages don't fit. It was after the denial statement. So then I started to think, well, when do you enter the stages? How long does each stage right. last? Do the stages go in order? Does everybody go in the stages? Do they come in a, a sequential matter? And now I know for a fact, and I'm here to tell you, the stages have nothing to do with grief or recovery. Right, yes, they do not fit in this world. And however, that being said, you have witnessed firsthand though with our dad and your best friend yeah. who have passed away and were dying and you, you actively saw the stages at work yeah. through their transition. Yeah. Yeah. So when my dad, when our dad was dying, my dad, you like that? I claimed him. When our dad was dying and he was giving the, um, the terminal illness of um, bone cancer, I can distinctly remember him being there and I going in that room one day and he said, hey, I, you know, I want to see if there's any treatment, like one day, like literally bargaining. Like maybe we should call the doctor and see what other treatment that they have. And maybe we can try this. And with my very best friend, Sharon, when she passed away, they offered her some treatment that seemed so off the chart, like there were no guarantees. I almost felt like they were practicing medicine on her. You know how they practice medicine? Like they wanted to give her this treatment and I was like, that sounds really painful and what what quality of life are you going to have and then she one day i would go in and she wasn't going to try the treatment and the next day she was trying the treatment i can remember being in with with dad where he was really upset and wasn't talking at all he went a few days as a matter of fact without speaking at all which i think was sort of depression um and then there was the time where he did have total acceptance when he called us all together right. remember that he called us all yeah, together, we the funeral. and we all sat around the table with him, and he planned out the funeral, and that was a moment of acceptance. And bargaining for sure, you know, him trying to change his diet and do everything he could, and um, uh, I saw it 100% in Sharon and Dad that they went through those, those moments and times for sure. One of the other things, Erica, that we sometimes people try to add to the stages that are not a part of st uh, a, uh, a stage and is not even a, it's more of a myth than anything is when you get closure. Right, right. Yeah. I, I absolutely hate the word closure and I think that it's something that society and I think they use it a lot in the in media. Well, when you get closure or I have closure, it's that word that as we're going to go through these stages and then the door is going to close in that acceptance part, and we're going to have this closure. I don't know what that feels like. I've never had it. But we teach completion, which is so different. It's completing what is broken in your heart, completing that emotional incompleteness in your heart, everything you needed to say and never got a chance to say. Well, I think for me, especially after Austin, I remember um, that was the second thing that grabbed me in the when we started grief recovery was Susan said, we're not going to tell you you're going to get closure because there is, is no such thing as closure. That also gave me relief because just like me having the adverse reaction to, you know, to saying, to being told something like that was something that I was like, if this woman thinks that I'm going to sit here and get closure on my son, like I was already prepared. I was so defensive 
And then when she said that, it just, it calmed me and made me like, okay, I'll listen a little bit longer. <laughs> yeah. Thank I'll you. I'll give her I'll a little sit, more of my attention. <laughs> I'll stay here for 12 weeks now. <laughs> so just really quick, something that you and I talk about often on the show, that there are some truths about grief. Grief is normal and natural. Grief is a conflicting feeling caused by the end or change in a familiar pattern. Grief is unique, just like you said, and individual to every person. And we can all experience a grieving experience at some point in our life. Those are the truth. Grief is up. Grief is down. Grief is all over the place. It is not a list of stages. And anyone that wants to buy into that or argue with me, call me, and I will go through it with you. <laughs> yeah, and th that's one of the things that's so hard is when you do have the loss of whatever it is, um, you're given so much bad information. You're, you're, people share with you the old myths that they learned when they were young, and, and it's, so, it's so important to have them reach out to us so that we can really let them know they're okay, those myths don't apply to them, their journey is their own, and if they put in some time and some work, they will make it on the other side and, and have the completion they need and, the, and to really free their hearts from the pain. 100%. 100%. This has been an amazing show. I love this uh, subject. I love sharing this subject with other people because so many times, what is the first thing that a griever tells us when they sit down in our office? Today, I think I'm in denial. <laughs> Today, I think I'm in anger, and I just, you know, I let them have it for the first few times, but we have to go there. We have to go there with them, because as long as people stay in the stages, Erica, they're not going to get to recovery as long as they think, because you can't find a way out of it. That's the truth. That's the truth. Like that one lady, I just rinse and repeat. Yeah. Well, where's the healing? Yeah, where's the healing? Where's the healing? Friends, thank you so much for allowing us into your life for this very short moment to talk about the five stages of grief and death. Hey, we want to let you know that with uh, fall coming and school starting, we know everyone is busy. So we've had to lower, even though they've been so popular, our mini sessions to just three a week. We want to implore upon you to try and grab one of those sessions. If you want to go deeper into a deeper dive about the stages, if you absolutely feel that you are in one of the stages, reach out to Eric and I. We would love to have the conversation with you. They are free 30-minute sessions, and we would love to talk to you and go a little bit deeper on the stages of grief. Erica, where can our friends find us? Our friends can find us on our website at healingstartswiththeheart.com. They can email us at sisters at healingstartswiththeheart.com. They can listen to our podcast on iTunes, Spotify, and SoundCloud, and uh, they can always find us on Facebook. We're under Healing Starts with the Heart. We're, we're a lot of places, so if, you, if you're looking, you should be able to find us. Guys, have a great day, and we look forward to talking to you and coming into your hearts next week. Thank you. Bye.